Hello, this is Andrew Wolf, and in this video I'm going to talk about determinants of blood pressure. Now, the um, first thing that is important to understand with determinants of blood pressure, sort of understanding the physics of um, the pressure of liquids in a tube. Now, the um, best way to understand this is to have a basic understanding of Poisson's law. Now, I don't want you to get intimidated by this um, by this formula and we're, we're going to break it down and make it very simple. So, But this is the formula that is Poisson's law. Now F stands for flow and in this, um, in this example we're going to be talking specifically about blood flow. So F is blood flow. Now blood flow equals the change in pressure change in pressure, in this case blood pressure times the radius of the vessel so the R stands actually times the radius to the fourth power that's very important to recognize and we'll explain why in a minute radius of the vessel uh, pi just stands for a constant and we're not going to worry about that and we're also not going to worry about the 8 and just sort of balances the concept this stands for the viscosity of the blood and L stands for length. Now we're just gonna do a little algebra actually I'll spare you the uh, all the steps in the algebra but you can um, do this yourself if you if you wish but basically what this correlates to or, you know, once you do the algebra, what we have is change in blood pressure equals the flow times the length of the vessel times the viscosity divided by the radius of the vessel to the fourth power. Okay? So, why is that important? Well, if you wanted to go through the trouble, you could calculate someone's blood pressure that way if you knew the length of the total um, length of the vasculature, the amount of blood flow, which is going to be deter which is going to equal cardiac output, right? Um, and the viscosity of the blood. And what's the viscosity of the blood? Well, Viscosity mathematically um, it equals the amount of force uh, that it takes to pump a fluid. So if you have a, vic visco a viscosity of 1 equals water, blood takes three times as much force to pump than water, so blood has a viscosity of three. Whoops, that wasn't a very good three. Of three. Now obviously if you have a very low hematocrit um, or decreased proteins in your serum this could be a little bit lower um, so that is going to have a significant effect on blood pressure if it is dropped enough. Um, and then we have um, divided by, this is all divided by the radius to the fourth power. So what does this all mean? clinically. Okay, well basically blood, blood pressure is directly proportional to flow. So it's directly proportional to flow on a one-to-one -one basis. So if you increase if you increase flow, if you increase cardiac output from 4 to 8 if you have a 100% increase in um, cardiac output, you are going to have an equivalent increase in blood pressure. Okay. Now, length, same thing is true. Now, um, when we talk about the pulmonary system, we're going to talk about how the pulmonary system has um, has a much shorter length in its vasculature than the systemic circulation, and a lot of that just has to do with the pulmonary circulation being um, 
confined to the short space of the lungs, whereas you know the systemic circulation includes a very long body with lots of organs in it. Um, so anyways, that's significant to know about that if you have if you have decreased length, you're going to have decreased blood pressure. And this is one component of, of why the pulmonary system is a low pressure system. Okay, so that's length. And viscosity also, blood pressure, you know, let me use different colors here. Blood pressure is directly correlated with viscosity. So if you decrease viscosity from a normal viscosity of 3 to 2.5, you're going to have a equivalent decrease in blood pressure. But what's really interesting to note here is blood pressure is inversely related to the radius to the fourth power. So inversely related to the radius to the fourth power. And what this means is if you de if you increase the radius by maybe a factor of two. So if you have a vessel that is, you know, one centimeter in diameter, and you increase it from one to two, then you are going to increase blood pressure to, actually you are going to decrease blood pressure because it's inversely related. You are going to decrease pressure, blood pressure by two to the fourth power. Now, it may be a, a while since you've done your high school math, so 2 to the 4th power means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 times, and that equals 16. So by increasing a blood vessel from 1 centimeter to 2 centimeters, if you've doubled the diameter of a blood vessel, you will decrease blood pressure by a factor of 16. So this is really important to understand. All the other factors in this in this equation, blood flow, vessel length, and viscosity, ha are directly proportional on a one-to-one -one basis, whereas radius is inversely proportional to a power of four. So radius, the radius of the blood vessel is the factor that has the most consequence for changes in blood pressure. Okay, so how does the body control blood pressure? Well, the main way that it controls blood pressure is by changing vessel diameter, or by changing the vessel radius. changing radius. So, um, in our body, we have, you know, in our vasomotor center, it's part of our sympathetic nervous system. Um, this is where, this is the main place that we control our blood pressure. Now, this sends out information via the sympathetic nerves. Remember, we've got the sympathetic ganglion down here along, that run alongside the, the spinal cord. And we send out information to arteri arteries and arterioles around the body. And the ar arteries and arterioles all have a muscular layer that um, respond to stimulus by the sympathetic nervous system. So remember I talked when we were talking about the nervous system and we talked about the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is always um, always has is always cranking out some level of norepinephrine. So the motor neurons of the from the vasomotor center always are putting out a certain Amount. Let's call it, you know, 50 
microns per minute or something. Now, I don't, this doesn't necessarily mean any, anything, but this would be called sympathetic tone. And this is what the body is going to be cranking out at any given time. And this keeps the blood vessels sort of constricted, sort of in the middle of its range. So, you know, if the, if the range of this blood vessel, it can constrict down to, you know, five micrometers and it can dilate up to you know 20 micrometers then if with um, a vasomotor tone somewhere in the middle it's going to be hanging out at around 12 micrometers right so the body can do two things it can either decrease that tone which would relate if we decrease this to 30 then we are going to relax the muscles and dilate this vessel maybe to 18 right so we're going to increase from 12 to 18 in diameter now this change is about a 50 percent change and 50 percent um, a 50 percent dilation of a vessel is going to dramatically um, decrease blood pressure remember it's an inverse relationship in fact you know if you do the math if you uh, if you do um, you know 1.5 um, to the fourth power it comes out to, to be about a factor of five so just a simple 50 percent increase in a vessel size is going to is going to decrease blood pressure by a factor of five so you can see you know you um, the vessel um, needs to constrict or um, dilate you know, a very small percentage to have dramatic effects on blood pressure. Anyways, so if, you know, the blood pressure can, the um, sympathetic nervous system can either increase or decrease the amount of epinephrine and norepinephrine that it is releasing at the local level on the vessels and cause them to either constrict down towards their minimal size or dilate up to its maximal size. Now if um, there, you know, sympathetic nervous system is the main way the body controls this, but locally we also have a lot of tissue factors and the immune system also has um, chemicals that can control it like histamine. And I know um, we talked about an example of vascular collapse um, if you have a um, histamine release throughout the body with an, an anaphylactic reaction, you um, basically what happens is histamine causes the um, the vessels to dilate significantly by 50% or more, and blood pressure plummets. You know, so you can end up with a blood pressure that is you know a third or a fifth normal, and you can end up with a patient that codes. Okay, the, now the second way that the body controls blood pressure is by controlling cardiac output, by increasing stroke volume or increasing heart rate. And again, the main way that it does this is through the sympathetic nervous system. This, <coughs> excuse me. The, remember, when the sympathetic nervous system um, releases epinephrine and norepinephrine. Um, it, it stimulates the beta-1 receptors in the heart and this stimulates a positive inotropic response that increases the force of contractility. It, it um, produces a positive dromotropic response and that just inc increases the speed of um, conduction of action potentials. And, and a positive chronotropic response. Now these two are going to have the most dr dramatic effect. The inotropic response is going to increase stroke volume by having a more forceful contraction. So you're going to go from you know an EF of 65% to an EF of 80%. <coughs> and a positive chronotropic response is going to increase heart rate. And both are going to work together to increase cardiac output. Now remember, cardiac output is equal to blood flow. And it has a one-to-one -one 
um, relationship with blood pressure. So if you increase cardiac output by 50%, you're going to increase blood pressure by 50%. So an increase of 50% cardiac output equals an increase of 50% of blood pressure. Okay, so those are the major determinants of blood pressure. Please take a note, moment to give me feedback by giving me a thumbs up or a thumbs down below. And uh, also uh, feel free to click on this link if you'd like to subscribe to my channel so you have easier access to the videos. Thank you very much.